Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in the last couple of videos, we were looking at how to set up our products and our order forms, setting up upsells and downsells. And what I did after the last video is I went in and I put a whole bunch of products into our funnel so that now we can go forward and we can test it. So as always, if you like my videos, make sure you come down here in the bottom right hand corner and subscribe. Now what you're going to find is as you build out all of these different products is ClickFunnels automatically puts in a thank you page for every single one. And they're all down here in the other funnel steps. And the reason why it does that is because as we saw as we were building out the products is you can send an email with that thank you page for every single one of your products so everyone has to have its own thank you page. So if you are not sending out that that email after somebody purchases you can come in here and you can start deleting out all of these pages and if you're on the ninety seven dollar plan i know there's a limitation to the number of pages you can have so if you're looking for somewhere to get rid of pages come down here into these other funnel steps and if you're not sending that automated confirmation with a link back to the thank you page you can come in here and delete out all of these extra pages so as you see, we got set up four products for our two-step order form, three products, and then a bump. And we did the exact same thing inside of the one-step order form. As you can see here, three products and then a bump. And then on our upsell page, our number one upsell page that is, I put in three products as well. And we're going to go inside of that page and take a look at what that looks like inside of the funnel itself, because there is a little bit of setting up to do that we did not do earlier. So here are the three products that we have set up. So let's go back to overview and then we will go into the page editor. And here we are in upsell number one and let's click on our button and take a look at what our action is set as. And see, up here at the top now, before we didn't have anything up here, it said no products were set. Now we have our three products, and we can pick any one of these three products as our upsell, except I think there's a problem with that. Because you also see down here, you got upsell 1-1 and upsell 1-3. Well, it's not showing upsell 1-2 down here as its own tab. But watch what's going to happen here. If I click on this button here, we go to upsell 1-1. The link stays as yes link for OTO. But if we go to upsell 1-3, you're going to see here the link just changed to yes link 2 for OTO. And so let me go back to number 1 and then back to number three, and it appends that two at the end. So what I think this is really telling me is that inside of ClickFunnels, you can only set up two items in here, and that if you use the second one, you have to have it be hashtag yes-link-2. And I've seen that before with the dash two at the end. So apparently you can only use two products in here. And frankly, actually, if you're setting up an upsell or a downsell, I don't know why you would really have more than one product anyway, because unless there's a way to dynamically pick them, you're always going to send somebody there and they're going to just click on the button, like in this case, or on the link, and they're just going to buy that individual product. So if you were doing it like this and you did have two of them set up, you would want to come in to our link right here and let's just open up that link. And at the end, instead of yes-link, it would yes-link-2. And then that would be set to, if they clicked on that link, it would be set to go to number two, which again, in our case here, is actually our third in our list here. It would be number three in our list. So what I'll say is, and I'll show you how it works differently in the downsell uh, number one, I would say here is choose from one of these tabs here. Don't come up here and use this drop down because it doesn't change this to link two. So let's just, uh, let's just bounce out of this here. We don't need to save this, so we will just leave this page. And then we're going to go into downsell number one to show what it looks like when you have just two links in here. So we'll open that up. And we'll go into the editor and click on the button and go to set the action. 
And so again here, we have our two possible down cells. And you see here, when I click from one to two, it doesn't change the link over here. But if I go to down cell two here in the tab, it does change it. So again, I would just use these two tabs because I believe that's the correct way that it should be showing if you're doing number two. Or just to be really safe, just put in one up cell and one down cell for each one of the pages. And then you don't have to worry about it. But either way, you want to test it. So then for upsell two and downsell two, I have exactly the same thing. Now let's go back into upsell number one because we're getting ready now to test our funnel. And I want to change that automation I had set up because I had it set originally to take uh, 30 minutes before it sent the email. And I, of course, want it to send the email to me right away so that we can click on the link and see if the CFUV ID works or not. So we'll come in and we will click on edit and email delay and we will take this out. Again, you would leave this in for normal circumstances, but in this case here I'm testing or when you're testing, uh, just do this as well. Just remember to put it back in at the end. And just to refresh everybody's memory, we will open up the link and show you what I'm talking about. So we'll come into this element right here that we changed into a hyperlink. And we'll click on the pencil to take a look at what the hyperlink is. And as you recall, we used the URL for the page. And at the end, we appended this code right here. Let me just open up my text editor again. So here's the code that we appended to the end. And what that will do then is it'll put a long string of numbers, anything after the equal here, it'll put a long string of numbers in there instead. And that tells ClickFunnels and Stripe that these people have already purchased, that the credit card is on file, and all they have to do then is just click on the yes link in order to purchase. So let's close all this back out, and then we will do one last thing before we go into testing mode, which is to turn on test mode inside of Stripe. And you do that by coming down here and you click on on for test mode. It's now on. We have to scroll down to the bottom and save and update. Okay, now we're ready to test our funnel. So first off, we're going to start with a two-step order form. Now, generally speaking, you're not going to have two different order forms on the same funnel like this. You don't need it because of the upsells and downsells. But again, this is just for testing and, and just showing how it works purposes. So we're just going to open this up in a new tab. And you're going to see at the top right away is they give you a credit card number up here for test purposes. So we're just going to grab out that credit card and we're going to keep that and we're going to then start filling in our information. And just for this one here, I just have in bogus information and now we will go to step number two. And you see here the three different products that I put in. And as I click on them, the number down here in the order summary will change. And so you see how those change. And then right down here, we have our order bump. You click on that. It populates the two-step bump. And again, we have whatever was up here at the top. At this point here, all we have to do is put in our credit card number, and we will complete the order. Now, when I click on this, it's going to go to the next page in the funnel, which, of course, will be the one-step order form. Obviously, you would normally have this then go to OTO number one if we were setting this up properly. And it's telling me I forgot something, which they changed how this form looks. This is interesting. So I need to put in a month and a date of expiration. And the date has to be any time out into the future. So we'll just say that. And then you can put in any three numbers for the CVC. And now it should work once we hit submit again. So here we bought the two-step number one. And now we're going to go to the one-step order form. Again, like I said, you would normally just go to the OTO, the first OTO at this point. So now let's keep it straight here. We'll just stick with number one again because we bought number one on the first one. And again, we can come down to the bottom and we can put in our bump if we choose. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to have to put in, let me see here. Okay, this, now I have to put in the right email address now so that I can actually get an email sent to myself. And now we will put in that CVC, I'm sorry, the credit card number. We will put in a date 
any date out in the future and then we will make up any CVC number and we will click to sign up which will now take us to OTO number one. Now with OTO number one, I don't want to buy it because I want, want it to be triggered that that, um, that that email gets sent to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the no thanks. And if you see down at the bottom again down here, it says no link. Whereas if I go up to the other two, both of them will say yes link. So we're going to say no link. It's going to tell me it's working. And you see up here in the line up here, CFUVID, and here's this big long number. So now we went to downsell number one. And let's say in this case here, we're going to take downsell number one. And this keeps showing up here all the time in this lower left-hand corner. This guy Noah sent me this one um, desktop message one time, and it pops up on my screen all the time. So now we here at um, upsell number two, which is where we should have gone. We bought the we bought the first down sell, and so then it populated it to send us to upsell number two. And again, in this case, I'm going to say no thanks again, but we're going to buy down sell number two, and we are going to click to sign up. Now, the next place we're going to go is to the confirmation page. And let's see if we got this populated correctly. We got our product was number one, step, step number one. Okay, that's right. And then we bought the two down cells. So both of these are correct. And now what's going to happen is when we come back in again, it's going to add the, any other purchases that we make is going to add them to this list. And so it's better to say on here something like, here is your purchase history. I really wish they would put like a date and time in here to let you know what that was. And then, of course, here you have an access purchase link right here, which let me see what happens when we click on that. Yeah, it brought us back to the confirmation page because we never set anything up here yet. But now let me pause for just a minute and let me go find that email and then we will click on the link and see if it brings us back to our upsell number one. And here's the email that I received. The um, subject line was, hey, Saul, you didn't buy. And here's the link. So let's cross our fingers and let's see if this brings us to where it's supposed to. And that's exactly where it was supposed to bring us to, is back to upsell number one. And you see up here, the CFUVID was populated right wherever it is, right, right here. So that is the token that tells ClickFunnels and Stripe that somebody already purchased. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Yes link. And it's going to show that we purchased upsell number one. And now it sent us to upsell number two, and let's uh, purchase upsell number two as well. So we should have bought all four products now, plus whatever the original product was. So here we go. Uh, we're back to our confirmation page with one step, number one, the downsell, the downsell, the upsell, the upsell. So we got all of them right here in our confirmation, or like I said, better to call it a history or, yeah, the history of all of their purchases. So they don't think that they came in and bought all of this again. So you want to change the verbiage up here so that they know that, you know, this is the total of their history of all of their purchases. Okay, now there's one last thing we need to take a look at, and that is the fact that none of these links were working. And the reason why is as I set up each one of these products, I didn't go in and set that link. So let's go back in and take a look at a couple of things. First thing here, I've already opened up. This is the confirmation page, and let me just click back out of here. So the first thing we want to look at is let's come down here to the confirmation page, and then we're going to open that up by clicking edit the page. And there's one thing we can do in here. If you get this confirmation page and you didn't want to set up any of those thank you pages like we did when we created the product, and we'll go back into that in a minute. If you didn't want this access purchase link showing up under anything and you just wanted to show them what they had purchased and what the price was, and you were going to send them a separate email with their link to be able to access everything. You can just come into the confirmation page itself, 
and we're going to come down and we're going to edit this. Now, let's say you are sending them to a membership site. So let's just say here we can change this thing here to access members area. Okay, so that way it's more descriptive of what they're going to receive when they click on this link. So that will then take them to the members area or they could access the thank you page. Or what you can do is just completely wipe that out. And then when it prints out, when the confirmation comes up, it'll just say what the product was and what the price was, and it won't have that link at all. So either way, you can set that up. So we're just going to click back out of here and leave this area. And then we're going to go back into one of our products and take a look at that again real quickly. So we'll just click on the one-step order form, and we'll go back into our products, and we will click on number one, and we're going to edit that. And you want to do this for all of your products. You want to set up this thank you page. I showed it briefly earlier, but we're in a Stripe product and we're going to click on our fulfillment email. Now, whether you send out this email or not is irrelevant because we can turn off the email and we can come down here and we're going to say select our thank you page or our membership page. And so we'll just click on that. And then we'll scroll down here and we're just going to say we're going to grab this members area. So now we got Jesse's cookbook members area. I really don't know what that is, but that's okay. And we're going to click on save and close. Now for anybody in the future who buys this product, that's the membership site that's going to be linked to right here. So what I did here is I actually just reloaded this page. I didn't think it was going to work, but it actually turned out it did. So now when I click on access purchase there, it brings me to the family cookbook of all of uh, Jesse's recipes right here um, inside of ClickFunnels. So that worked out great that uh, once you go in and you actually set once you actually set where they're going to go to, um, it populated perfectly. So there we go. So that is it for setting up our order forms and our products and testing everything. So again, if you like my videos, uh, click down here on subscribe. And otherwise, if you've got any questions, reach out to me.